I'm going to go through how to create your own planner, devotional, or journal, and then how to sell it. Hello, and welcome back to the Dream Printing Podcast. I am your host, Polly Payne. I am the creator and CEO of Horatio Printing. And today we're gonna to really go through the details of starting a planner biz. I'm gonna go through how to create your own planner, devotional or journal, and then how to sell it. So we're gonna go through two parts today, how to create and how to sell. And I wanna to talk to you first about how to create a planner company. And maybe you have been wanting to know or you've been curious about it. And what's exciting is we actually just launched our 2024 planner. Um, here is the dream planner for those of you watching on YouTube. You can check it out. This is the one I'm actually going with this year. It's the vegan black leather coil. It's our first year to do a black leather coil. Um, we had a couple episodes recently on the podcast uh, talking about launch day. They weren't on YouTube, but they were on our audio podcast, which you can find on Apple or Spotify. Um, but our launch day was our record launch day this year, which was so exciting. I think we did like $20,000 in the first minute which was so cool our warehouse is just now kind of catching up on everything from launch day but i just want to show you that and tell you that not to brag but to let you know it is possible to create and then to sell your thing and maybe that's been a dream that you've had for a while um, and it's been a dream on the back burner of your heart and i think there's two things that really hold us back the first is education. Maybe there's three things that hold us back. The first is education. Like how do I actually do it with excellence? Make something luxury, make something incredible, make something I'm super excited to talk about and, and to sell. The second thing is making time. Like we often don't have the time or we don't make the time to flush out the product that's been on the back of your heart. And so we're going to talk about that. I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to get started on your journey. And I'll give you some resources you can use when this lesson's over so you can take the next step. Um, and I think the third one is just self-doubt, like the belief that people won't buy it. There's already enough planners out there. There's already enough prayer journals out there. Um, and so we can, it's, we can, easily get into self-doubt and even just stopping dreaming. Like when you were a child and I have two little kiddos, like dreaming is so natural. It's part of our human nature. And I'm a huge fan of dreaming. My planner is the dream planner. Um, so I think about and teach on dreaming a lot. And I think as a kid, it's like you knew you were a part of a bigger story, right? We, we know that we have like a big life to live. Like we're called to something greater. And as we grow up, it's like we start to lose it. You know, we start to lose our creativity and our, our will to dream. And often we have missed expectations and things that we wanted to happen that didn't happen. And so we want to lower our hopes so we don't get hurt. And I just want to encourage you, we have had so many incredible students go through print school, launch their thing, have tremendous success. One of which, um, I'll show you a couple of our students. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, you can check these out. But this is Amanda Neely's uh, financial journal, Five Smooth Stones. So cool. Her company is the Wealth Wisdom Financial. She did a Kickstarter for that and was fully funded. Uh, Bethany Kimsey launched, launched her prayer journal. This is the Warrior Mama Prayer. She pre-sold 500 copies um, during the pre-sale and she's continuing to go, which is awesome. And then this is a serenity journal by Jamie that I'm so proud of. It says a daily personalized scripture journal. And it's so, so beautiful. For those of you just listening, you can hear the linen. <laughs> I should do like an ASMR on this. It's, it's so nice. Um, but it's a beautiful white linen. She lives in California. So it's very California chic um, coastal grandma, if you will. But anyways, I'm excited to just go ahead and dive in. If you're taking notes today, we're going to talk about how, and I'm going to go through the three steps to get started on making a planner that you're proud of or a journal or devotional. It'll work for any of those. 
And then we're going to talk about selling, what that looks like um, and what you can expect. So the first step in the process of creating your thing is ideation. Now in my print school and also in my free workshop, I teach the dream printing method. This is the method that I take to create every single product that I put out at Horatio Printing. And if we are new here, um, I've been running Horatio Printing for over nine years. We've sold over 45,000 planners worldwide um, around year 2017 is where I hit the 250K mark in my business. I don't say that to brag. I just say that for full transparency so you can understand like, oh, that's that's a possibility. And from there, we've grown every year in our revenue. Um, and so that's, you know, I guess that was two years in. I was able to hit six figures and then hit about 250 on my second year, um, my third planner launch, but second year in business. So that's where we're at with the sales. Um, and I teach all of that, but I just want to give you that, that context. Cause people ask me that all the time. Like, is it really successful? Is it worth it? Like, can I make money selling paper products? And you can, but you can absolutely waste money <laughs> selling paper products too. If you buy too many, if you buy from the wrong printer and it's too expensive, like, um, and this is why I started my print school to kind of have that transparency, give that information and equip people because I had to learn a lot of things the hard way over the past nine years because there just isn't the education out there, like I said before. So the first step is ideation. What does that mean? What is ideation? Ideation is the process of going from an idea in your head to a concept on paper. And that could be digital paper or like legit paper. I'm kind of a legit paper girl, but I do have digital prototypes that I create in the ideation process. So the ideation process is getting the idea out of your head and onto paper fully fleshed out. So this is where you're really creating your concept. What are you making? Who is it for? How does it help them? That, that vision statement, which is something, if you watch my workshop, we'll do together. Um, so that's really flushing out the concept. Another important part of ideation is really solidifying your branding, making sure that your branding is what you want. It's clear, it's defined, you have the rights to it, and then making sure your entire product is cohesive with that branding. And that's something to go ahead and figure out at the beginning. You don't want to wait till the next step, wait till you're, you know, halfway done designing it and then go, okay, let me figure out my branding. Like you want to have that done at the beginning so that you don't waste time on step two. So that's a step one item. And then another important part of the ideation that it's critical for you to actually get started. This is, this is definitely one of those places where people get tripped up is the user experience which means what do you want the customer to experience as they're using your product? And that's going to help you build it. If you don't know what you want someone to experience or how you want them to use it, how are you going to create it? You know, like how would you create a pin if you didn't know what the experience should be? You know what I mean? Like you, you know, you need to know what you want them to experience so you can create the experience. And that's what's also gonna make it really sellable. When you are really intentional with the design and you're intentional with the user experience, your customers are gonna notice and then they're gonna come back and buy again and they're gonna buy it as gifts because it was intentional, thoughtful design. And that all happens at the beginning. And that's why it's so important to sit down and think about that. And I go through this and teach more in depth in my free workshop, which you can register for right here. It's ratioprinting.com slash workshop. I go through the ideation process a little more. Um, and then of course, inside of my print school program, which is my guided paid program where I take print school students through the entire process of going from an idea to a paper product in their hand. Um, we go through ideation and I give them my templates and my lessons and my guides of how to create their digital prototype and also how to solidify their branding. So that's really important. Let me explain what user experience means a little more um, just to help you out. So for example, let's say you wanna make a devotional and you're like, I know I wanna make a devotional and like I want it for this type of person and I think I'm gonna go around the book of John or something like that. Um, 
and I do have a, a whole video lesson on how to make a journal devotional, but you need to understand like, is this for 10 days? Is this for 30 days? Is this for 90 days? And also when they sit down to work on it, are they doing two pages at a time? Are they flipping through four pages at a time? Like what's the experience? When I was first making my planner, one thing I wanted when people opened it up is I wanted a welcome letter. And back then in 2014, when I was making my 2015 planner, there weren't a lot of planners on the market that had welcome letters in them. And that's kind of crazy because a lot of them now do. But when you pick up a planner somewhere, it would have the, you know, first page that's like, this planner belongs to you or uh, if found, please return to. And then the next page would just be the, the year to glance. There was no welcome letter. And you know what it's like when you've had a product and you can tell someone's been intentional. This was created by a human. You know, this wasn't created by ChatGPT or some fake robot. Um, this is a thoughtful product. And that's what helps you sell it, which we'll get into sales later. But the ideation process is key. And a lot of people are worried when they're jumping into print school, like, do I have to have my idea all flushed out before I jump in? I'm like, no, that's the whole point. Like, let's do it together so it's right. Um, anyway, so that's the first step is ideation. And that's just sketching it out, right? Sketching out what do you want on this page? What do I want on that page? And what do I want to say? And what do I want to take them through? What's the process I'm taking them through in the product? The second step to creating your planner or journal or devotional is design, intentional design. And I would beg to guess that a couple of you watching this probably have started to build something on Canva at some point, right? I love Canva, so I would be in the same boat as you. Um, what happens is on Canva, you'll go on there, you'll look at planners and then pull a bunch of templates together and then it starts to become like this Frankenstein product, which is not what you want. You don't want a Frankenstein product. You want a beautiful, cohesive, intentionally designed product where everything aligns and everything looks good together and it feels high end and luxury. And the person opening it is like, wow, this is well done. You know, that that's what you want. And so with Canva, it is more difficult to achieve that result. It's not impossible. But it's not impossible, but you have to know the right way to tweak Canva in order for you to be confident that your layouts are going to match, that your left page and right page are going to look really good together when they're bound together. And that takes finagling and that takes proper education. Um, maybe you've already mastered that, but I highly recommend designing in InDesign, which is an Adobe program. Inside of Print School, um, we have a designer in Print School that teaches you how to design on Canva or InDesign and how to you know follow those rules and figure it out. And we give you templates, but that's only if you're really going the DIY route um, and you are doing it yourself, which is totally possible and honestly, like super awesome. If you jump into Print School and you learn how to design your own paper product, like you could design paper products, which is awesome. So for me, I prefer to outsource. I prefer to hire somebody else and let them do it um, so I can focus on other things in my business because it's gonna take me a lot longer than a designer would. So that's what I do. And we teach both ways, how to manage a designer, how to hand it off well so that you save as much money as possible. I also give you access to my designers. I have three preferred partners so you can Find one that fits your budget that, you know, is on your timeline and, and like has beautiful work. I've hired, I've used all my designers for my products. So everyone is vetted by me, which is great. So you don't have to go looking for that person. Um, but what you don't want in design is a Frankenstein product that is disjointed and not cohesive and doesn't flow. Because remember, step one, user experience. You want to have a good user experience. And you know what it's like to have a bad user experience. And you're probably on this journey because you couldn't find the thing you wanted. You know what I mean? You, you couldn't find the planner you wanted. That's what happened to me. I couldn't find the planner that worked for me. And I decided to do it myself. And maybe, maybe we're alike in that way. So that's the second step is design. At the end of the design phase, you have a print ready file. And when you take that print ready file and start my favorite part, which is 
prototyping, where you actually work with a printer and you get a prototype made, which is so exciting. So one thing that's really fun in print school, I actually pay for your first prototype. So I cover the cost to get your first uh, product printed. So you can then use this product to create marketing materials and pre-launch your product, which is great. That can, the pre-launch sales can help you pay for it. So you don't have to worry about buying a ton upfront in advance um, and spending your own money on that. And so prototyping is the next step. You always, always, always want to have a sample of your product before you buy 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000. You want to have a sample. So prototyping is a critical step. That's the third step. So you have ideation, design, and prototyping. For me, I get this question a lot, who's your printer? (laughs) Where do you go? And I use a printer overseas. I first used a printer uh, my first year had a printer in North America. And I go through this in detail in the workshop. If you wanna check that out, horatioprinting.com slash workshop. I used a printer, but it was way too expensive. And so I started working with a printer overseas, which can be scary. Things get lost in translation. It takes a while to learn how to communicate. Like we have different words for different things. And um, you have to be super specific and they use a different uh, measuring system. You know, they're using millimeters and we're over here using inches and centimeters. So um, I teach you how to communicate with these printers, how to build a quote, how to request a sample. And then of course I pay for your sample and I give you direct access to my preferred printers. So multiple printers. So you can get a quote from a couple of them and then pick your favorite and get your sample made. And once you're super happy with your sample, you can move on to selling. Now I want to talk a little bit about selling because it's one thing to create something it's another thing to sell it successfully and i'm so proud we've had a couple print school students that i showed you guys earlier that have sold their products successfully and they followed my method and one of the things that's really cool about print school is it comes with a free course called launch school that takes you through how to launch things successfully um and so i'm going to go through my three keys to selling successfully. And I actually, um, I have some more, um, resources that I'll share with you after this episode. But the first one is the first key to selling. This might not be a surprise, but it's having a high end luxury product, something you are confident in selling. You want to feel confident when you're putting your product out there. Like, look at this. I love it. You want to love it, you know? And every year there's probably something that like, I wish could be a little better about my product, but like, I love it. It's got all the bells and whistles I want. It's got the tabs. It's got the elastic strap. It's got the coil. It's got the golden corners. It's got the gold foil, um, debossed stamping. Like I love my planners. I really do. I do. Um, I, don't mean to brag, but I am known for my luxury products. Like I like to put them in luxury dust bags and in a box and with all these extra accessories. And the thing about having a high-end luxury product is you're creating an experience for the customer where they open it up. And it's not just that they're impressed. Sure. Like they're impressed. They're like, wow, this is amazing. You want to create a wow moment, right? but they're, they know that it was made by a human. Like it's, it's all about intentional design. And I think when you are really intentional with your design, you can share love, you can create impact, you can make someone feel special. And that's what I love. I love when people open my products, they can feel special. They, it feels like, wow, this was made for me. And like, this was made to encourage me. And like, that's what makes me really happy. So the first one is creating a high-end product. I cannot tell you how many people have come into print school and have um, applied to join print school and told me, hey, I actually already printed a product and I hate it. (laughs) Like, it's not what I wanted. It's like, I'm like, I'm kind of embarrassed. Like, I don't even want to sell it. And I get it. Like, you don't want to sell stuff you don't like. And maybe they used Amazon KDP or they used Lulu and it's like, it's okay, but it's not great. It's stapled. Like, you know, they didn't have the binding I wanted. They didn't have the cover I wanted. I couldn't customize the paper thickness. Like they're limited because they're working with a print on demand person. And I would just say, say no to print on demand. Say no to the easy way. Like 
say no to print on demand because you don't get the quality you want. You don't get the linen, you don't get the leather, you don't get the extras, you don't get the, the box. This is another one of my print school students who also used, uh, she created a box with her planner and her big thing is be the one who says yes. This is Cheryl from Cheryl Ziegler Creations. Her little logo's on the back, so proud of her. Um, but she wanted to create something beautiful and she knew um, this was the way to do it. It was to do it herself. My other student, Bethany, she could have had her book published by a traditional publisher, but she knew she wanted control of how it looked so it could be like a coffee table book or a nightstand book that was calming and beautiful and high end. And she's making more money publishing it this way than she would have with a publisher, which is so exciting. So the first thing is, high-end luxury printing. You want to have the right printer. You want to have the right quality materials. Um, so you can have confidence. That's going to give you the confidence when you're selling it. You're not going to feel like, oh, it's okay. You're going to feel like this is beautiful and people will, will feel that energy from you. So that's the first one is having the confidence in having a high-end product. Also having a high-end product will bring people back. It'll, it'll spark the idea that this would make for a great gift. You know, when when you have a beautiful product, people become raving fans and they come back and buy again. You can't, you know, once you've made an impression on somebody, you can't really make like a second impression. Like your first impression matters and you want to put your best foot forward. The second key to selling is creating launch demand. You have to create demand for your product. You can't just Put yourself out there with like, hey, here's a website, go buy something. Like, I made a website, yay. I mean, maybe five, 10 people will, you know, go buy it off of a Facebook post. If you have an email list, like maybe you've already created demand, that's great. Some people that join print school already have an email list, already have like a good little buying audience, or maybe they have other services that they've offered and this is comparable. But some people join print school and they don't have any of that. And it's like, all right, well, how do I create a buying audience? And I'll do more content around this, but I think it's really important to understand that's a big step is creating launch demand. And in launch school, I teach you how to do this. We set this up way in advance. And I was actually laughing with one of my um, employees. She it was her first year doing a launch with me. And our launches have been like, it's our biggest sale day of the year, every year. And her husband was like kind of working over her shoulder because she was running the um, customer service desk. And we did 20K in the first minute this year. And she said, her husband said, it's crazy how Polly's able to create so much like, what did he say? He said, called it um, fake demand, like fake urgency. <laughs> and I wasn't offended by that at all. I was like, because obviously like nobody has to have a planner on October 1st. You know, like nobody has to have that. Like January is a few months away, right? But I create urgency in the way that I do my marketing. So that's what I'm good at. I'm good at strategically creating urgency and creating demand. And you do that through education. You do that through photography, you do that through video, you do that through um, doorbusters, and just there's so many ways to create demand and product education so that people are not only excited about launch day, they've already said, yes, I want this. Maybe, you know, they've been, they've known about the product for 10 months and now it's finally here. Like you can create demand so early and get people in your bubble that are ready to partner with you and buy your product. So it's really key that you put your marketing hat on and get serious about creating launch demand. And we have a whole method for this. We offer um, the education of either doing a traditional launch like I do, or doing a pre-order launch. You can do it through Kickstarter or through your website um, where you offer a discount or other prizes. And I go through both of those inside of Print School. Excuse me. Um, I have some other episodes I did want to point you to inside of the Dream Printing Podcast. I think both of these were audio only, not on YouTube. But episode 192 is my five keys to a successful launch. And episode 197 is my launch day recap. I actually I recorded that the day after launch day and shared like everything I learned from it. 
and like what we did this year, like different strategies that worked and all of that. So if you're more curious about launching and what that looks like, you can go listen to episode 192 and 197. So the third key to um, successfully selling is you want to be set up for success with the proper e-commerce solution. You want to have an e-commerce platform that's going to work for you, that's going to seamlessly allow customers to learn about your product, understand your product, and then check out and buy your product. And it's going to be minimal amounts of clicks um, and maximum amount of visual beauty. And it needs to be responsive design. That's why I like Shopify. And I teach how to set up a Shopify store, how to set up the whole store, how to set up your branding, how to edit a template in Shopify, how to set up your product page, how to set up your tech on the back end, how to connect your email server to Shopify, all of that. All of that is taught inside of Launch School, which is so cool. That's a bonus that comes with Print School. So that is what I recommend for selling. You wanna have a high-end product. You don't wanna have a Bobo product. That's the first one because that's going to be of confidence and that's going to help you have customer retention, which is the most important thing. I don't want you to just start a business. I want you to have a business 10 years from now that's still going. And that is harder. It's easier to, sorry, there's like a fly in my office. <laughs> um, it's easy to start a business. Keeping a business growing through a pandemic, we went through that. Actually, our pandemic year was one of our best years um, in 2020. But keeping a business, that's what I want for you. I want you to keep growing it, to keep having it, to keep seeing it expand and watch one product become 10 products. What's exciting now in my career is not only am I now teaching and empowering other people, but I'm getting a lot more speaking engagements. I'm able to go around and talk about dreams and become more of a um, an encourager outside of being behind a computer and working in my business. So it's it's opened a lot of doors and I never would have saw this connection to where I started, but that's God, you know? So anyways, I uh, hope that's encouraging to you. So the three steps are to have a high-end product that you're confident with, creating launch demand, that's critical. You can't just throw your product out there and expect people to buy it if you haven't educated them and created launch demand. And then third is having a really beautiful e-commerce platform so that customers have a smooth experience checking out on desktop or mobile. So all of that is taught inside of Print School. I hope you will consider applying. You can go to HoratioPrinting.com slash Print School to check it out. And of course, if you want to check out more about it and take my free workshop as a next step, you can do that at HoratioPrinting.com slash workshop. I would love to hear what you want to hear about next on the Dream Printing Podcast. You can comment below, or if you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe and comment below. If you're listening you can write it in the chat or you can DM me on Instagram what you want to see next because I want to create more fun videos and content for you. I hope you have a wonderful day. You are so loved. Bye, guys.